Mark Rounds is a uh, has a very interesting story that he's willing to share. Uh, this is not a corporate story. This is a personal story. And you'll probably learn and remember this story more than any other you'll, you'll likely to hear because it resonates with each one of us. So Mark is an executive at the Bolt Company. Uh, he has done this before in Madison because he works in two different areas of the state. Mark, we're delighted to have you with us. Thank you, Dick. Uh, it is an honor and a pleasure to be here. I hope my story uh, can fulfill the uh, expectations that Dick has already laid out there for me. Um, I work in construction, and the image of construction is a uh, tough guy, a macho. You know, we don't say we're sorry, we don't have feelings, we just get it done. And as a young man, that inspired me. I grew up in a divorced family. I lived with my mother. I was barely above the poverty line. And as a, as a boy, I became determined to get out of poverty. I, I didn't like where I was living. I didn't want to be here, so I became dri driven, competitive, tough. Whatever it took, I was going to get out of this. And that meant being good at school, doing what it took, and also getting to college, getting a degree, and finding a professor. And so, I didn't let anybody get in my way. I had a few friends, and we stayed, we stayed close. And I had another few friends. If they didn't see my vision or they got in my way of my goals, I discarded them. I ran them over, and we were done. So I didn't have a lot of friends. But my, my desire and ambition was to succeed. And when I got to college, I was the same way. I was tough. I was driven. I was hardworking. I made sure that I got done what I needed to do, get the good grades, get the best job. And it, it was fortunate to land a construction job right out of college. And I loved it. I showed up the first day and I was the boss. I was in charge. What I said goes. I say you do. That's, that was construction. And we're tough about it. Now as long as everything was going well, we were having a good time. If it wasn't going well, then I strapped at the boots. I started yelling. I got in people's face. We're going to get this done. I was the boss. And you know what? Our projects were successful, they got done on time, and they met our budgets, but the staff wasn't having any fun. I don't think our owners were having any fun, but so what? They got what they paid for. We were delivering a product. But deep down, I wasn't having any fun. I wasn't enjoying this, and it was reflecting on me and reflecting on my family as well. But it was the industry that I had chosen, it was where I was going to be. And, and a few years later, I ended up managing uh, other engineers, professionals. And I had mellowed out a little bit. You know, I'd listen to their complaints, but as long as the plan was going in the direction I had, then it was fun. But if it wasn't, I'd plumb them up, straighten them out, we're gonna go do it my way. It's gonna be my way or else. Now, I, I tried to be good, it wasn't always working. Those that I liked knew that I liked them and I was a little more tolerant with them. Those that I didn't like <coughs> knew it and they realized they either better get their job done or they better get out. Because I was driven, I expected everybody to work just as hard as I did. Again, staff wasn't really very happy and nor was I. But I really didn't know any other way. And then in my late 30s, I had three life-changing events happened within about two years. The first one, I was walking on a job site and about 50 yards ahead of me were some iron workers working on some beams and columns when I heard this loud snap. And it was the boom of the crane had broken and it was starting to fall. And it hit one of the iron workers right in the head and killed him. And as I was surveying the scene, it made me sick. This guy was my age. He had two kids and a wife at home just like me. He wasn't going home. They were never going to see him again. And I started to think that maybe there's more to my career than just pushing myself and driving others to, to develop a product. The next event happened not too long after 
I had been on the road for over a year. I was gone every week and home on weekends. When I really thought about it, I wasn't any different than the, the divorced father who just had visitation rights. My kids were getting the same life that I had, and I didn't like it. And my son asked me to be there on his very first day of school. And I said, yes, I can stay home that day. And why don't you get on the school bus? Because he was so excited that day, and I'll be here. And the week before that day, my boss came to me and said, you need to be in South Carolina for some visit by the owner. I said, I can't go. He says, you have to go. I said, I've got plenty of staff there. They may not even visit. At, you know, it's just speculation. The staff that I have will be able to handle and manage this. He said, you either go or you're gone. He was treating me the way that I have been treating others, and I had been with this company for 11 years. One meeting or you're gone. Well, that morning I woke up and saw my son get on his school bus, <laughs> and I started working on my resume. <laughs> the third event happened afterward, because we, we were living in Virginia at the time, and I found a new job, and we moved to Chicago. My wife found a new church that she really liked, and they were worshiping in the gymnasium of the school and had plans to build the building. I walked up to the pastor and said, if I can help you, let me know. And the next week I was in charge of the building committee. <laughs> <laughs> and we started putting this church together. And as we built the church, I started to learn something. I started to see a spiritual side to the purpose of being a builder. Everything that I build has a benefit for people. Just like Tom was talking about before. And I never really thought of it that way, but my customers were people that had a desire. This building had to accomplish something for them. And I needed to know what it was so I could help them reach their goals. Now I've built bridges, I've built roads, I've built treatment plants, I've built office buildings, schools, hospitals, <clears throat> churches. Every one of them serves a purpose for people enhancing their lives. It changed the way that I thought about my career. And the second thing is that all of those buildings and structures I put together are built by people. People with aspirations, people with dreams, people with desires, people that want to make a difference in the world. And it was no longer about me and my goals and what I wanted to get done and how I saw it getting done. But it was now about the people that were working with me, not for me. And the people I was working for, the owners. And I changed my perspective on how I was going to go about my business. And I was very fortunate seven years ago to be hired by the Bolt Company to be the vice president of their operations. And the first thing that I did was I said, I'm spending the first year getting to meet everybody in our organization. We had about 55 salary staff and about 12 superintendents, and my goal was to sit down and meet with all of them and get to know them, understand their dreams, understand their desires. I'd be better at managing them and leading them if I know where they want to go. And so I did that. And I had one manager who was really tough to deal with. I'll, I'll call him Jeff. And Jeff was just tough. He, he was a tough nut to, to crack. And as I talked with Jeff, I just couldn't get through him. And the upper management had already written Jeff off. He's done and he's gone. You know, don't waste your time. We're letting him go. And about the same time, we had a, a consultant come in to do some personality assessments. You know, try to tell us what we could do and how we could use these tools. So all the upper level managers took it and we said, well, we got a few more. We can throw in a few managers. I said, let's throw Jeff in there. Well, a week or so later, the, the consultant came back and was reading the results to the executive team. And he reads my, my supervisor's results, and my supervisor's nodding his head and said, yeah, that's, that's pretty close. Yeah, you're, you're pretty right on. And he read mine, and I smiled and said, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much right on where I'm at. And then he read Jeff's about being you know, a compassionate man who has a desire to. And my boss said, wait a minute, that is not him at all. And I said, you know. I've seen that in Jeff. I said, give me an opportunity to see what I can do there. And so I spent some more time with him. And this is when I learned 
what empathy was. I listened to his story, and I became part of his story, became part of where he was at. I mean, empathy was more than just walking a mile in his shoes. It was understanding his story, understanding his life, understood what motivated him, understanding the stories that he tells himself that causes the things that he does. I mean, we all tell ourselves stories that, that lead to our actions. So what story was he telling himself? And as I learned that story, what it was is that the supervisor before me was one of those command and control guys like I used to be. And he hated Jeff and was ready to run him off. And Jeff was defending himself for trying to stay on the job. And when I came on board, everybody else had this aura about him. He was just fighting. And he just put me right in that whole group. But once he understood that I cared about him, that I wanted to help him, we built trust. Empathy led to trust, which then led to Jeff becoming, today, one of our top managers and in charge of one of our major clients. He's been promoted twice in the last four years, and he's now considered a top performer. It's all because I cared, not because of anything that I did, but I showed empathy, I showed compassion, and I showed interest, and that's where I ended up. Empathy has led me in our group to, to change the way that we do our employee reviews. Our reviews used to be the checklist, you know, we'd have a list of things that they did in the year and then it would say above average, average, or needs improvement. And then they were scored. So everybody wanted the highest score. So if you ever put down needs improvement, it would be an argument. Yet how are you gonna get better if you don't find something to improve on? And we were not getting the results that we wanted from this. And I said, our, our reviews have turned out to be negotiations over a score, not whether or not somebody's going to develop. I said, why don't we change our reviews to have some empathy, to have an opportunity for the employee to say, here's what I did, here's what I'd like to do, Here, here's where I want to be in the short term, here's where I want to be in the long term. And then as leaders, our job is to look at that and say, okay, how does it fit into the plan? How do we get each individual to do what they need done and what the company needs done and how do we get them to where they want to be and our reviews today are looked forward to we, we we chat all the time but when we have that one formal review we're actually documenting this person's dreams and that's made the the discussion you know and not a not a negotiation well i hope you've liked my story so far going from a command and control boss to what I hope you consider an empathetic leader. I, um, I have always fought, you know, that, or, or when, I, when I used to fight about being in control, I realized today that the more control that I grabbed, the less that I actually had. And today what I do is I set boundaries. I set the boundary out for where the staff can work within. And then I allow them, giving them the tools, the support, the encouragement to go about and work within those boundaries, even make mistakes within those boundaries, and we learn and reflect from those. And now what I find is that I don't need all that control. In fact, I'm a lot happier. My staff's a lot happier. In fact, our projects are still getting done on time and in budget, but our owners are enjoying it. And deep down, that happiness in me reflecting my family has been a pure joy. And so, as I've been on this journey, my goal is to be the man that, that God has created me to be, one who invests in other people, one who encourages others, one who wants to see others reach their goals. And by no means am I perfect, and by no means am I there yet. It's a struggle every day. I mean, some of those old habits die hard. But I know that, you know, through practice and through learning and, and through organizations like this, give me the opportunity to grow. So thank you very much for your time this morning.